right, so here we are at the pond. Uh, and during the season when it's warm and not frozen, there's lots of wildlife that lives in here. Um, it's been a while, but I definitely remember snapping turtles. Can anyone else recall any other wildlife that they've seen in the pond or even around the pond? Yeah, there are a number, there's like six turtle species. Painted turtles, I assume, mm -hmm. probably red-eared sliders. Yep. Um, red-eared sliders are a non-native species. Uh, if anyone was wondering, they are a common pet. And the reason that they're often found in lots of ponds is because people are sick and tired of taking care of their turtles, so they release them into a pond. And it's so interesting learning about all the ways that non-native species have been introduced. Um, to the U.S. been to all different sorts of sorts of places, but uh, we do have lots of uh, native turtle species as well. So snapping turtle and painted turtle in here as well. If you think of any other species, right. let me know. Yeah, lots of frogs. Musk turtles, yellow-eared or bellied sliders, which are also invasive, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, that might be it. But. Okay. So when we talk about our native turtle species, uh, they a lot of the turtles that we're specifically talking about here in the pond uh, need to be near water, right? Their, their entire life cycle kind of revolves around the water. Um, so in the winter time, right now, as we speak, all those turtles that live in this pond are underneath this layer of ice. Some of them have burrowed themselves into the mud underneath and they will stay there until the spring. It's very interesting. So water is a great buffer. So if we were to go into the water underneath, especially as you get down towards the bottom, it's gonna be much warmer than it is out here, the air temperature. Air uh, takes a lot less energy for it to cool down and for it to warm up, whereas water takes a lot more energy. So it needs to be much colder for much longer uh, in order to get cold down at the lower levels of this pond. And then add mud on top of that, and it's kind of an insulator. But in addition to that, these turtles have uh, lowered their metabolism. They're kind of hibernating, but when we talk about yeah, turtles hibernating. and amphibians, it's called brumation. It's kind of a different, it's a different way of lowering that metabolism. And one concern when you are frozen underneath of a pond is when that layer of water on top completely freezes, it limits oxygen uh, flow between the water and the air. So oxygen can't get into the pond. When this happens, turtles actually go into an additional state of anoxia. So they don't need to use as much oxygen. They change how their metabolism functions so they don't need as much oxygen. They can't do that forever. So here we'll, we know that this will probably unfreeze in parts as the temperature gets warmer, then it'll refreeze. So they can do that for days, even a couple weeks, um, but they will need this to thaw at some point in the winter for them to get that oxygen exchange. Um, box turtles do something a little different. So they are our only turtle species that can actually survive its internal organs freezing. Whoa. So that's why all these turtles have to go underneath because they cannot handle having all of their internal organs freeze. But our box turtles are quote unquote freeze tolerant. So our box turtles right now have found burrows that are likely abandoned by groundhogs and other uh, mammals. So they're under the ground, but it still gets cold under the ground because again, we've got kind of that soil acting as a buffer, but it's not as effective as water. But what they do is they move all of the water outside of their internal organs, they push it out, and then they eject something that's pretty much equivalent to antifreeze into their internal organs. So all the water outside of the organs and all around their organs freezes. Technically their organs don't freeze because they've got that glycol or antifreeze in there, um, but they are frozen solid. They are frozen solid, which is crazy. And that also happens with some of our really, really early um, frog species. Spring peepers and wood frogs do something very similar. Push that water out of their internal organs and they freeze solid. And their body just makes that glycol? Yep, yep. So their body produces that glycol and then come springtime, they can unthaw within hours. Amazing. And they can be calling, <clears throat> mating, getting ready to go for spring within hours. 